John. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you with us in studio. A board meeting to discuss. Abs- what have we missed? Absolutely. Uh, and our monthly board meeting was yesterday. Again, as we kind of wind down the year, we're kind of just doing a lot of uh, cleanup work and housekeeping work. One of the things that we're required to do, as, as uh, most people know, healthcare is the most regulated agency, I think, out there. So we have regulations for everything. And one of them is that once a year, our director of facilities must update the board, kind of the state of the union of the hospital, the building, the infrastructure. So Brian Crawford did that yesterday, came in and kind of said, here's, you know, things that's going on, things that might need replaced, and what the status is. One of the most critical things that uh, he talked about that we're probably going to be doing early uh, next year is what's called our cooling towers. And uh, they're fairly old, and that's how we actually cool the building during the uh, summer months. So we're not really needing that right now. Uh, you know, once the temperature drops below 50 degrees, then we can work on that. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do that ourselves. We've got the uh, the parts are here. We're just kind of waiting for that time when we know it's going to be below 50 degrees for a, at least a week, and we'll be replacing those cooling towers. Mm-hmm. After that, we kind of talked about just other items that was on his list. Uh, you know, the roof, there's aspects of it's going to be replaced. So it, that allows the board to kind of have a preview of coming attractions, lack of a better term. As we move forward in the year, what are some of the things that the, might be coming to the board and say, hey, we need approval for this? And, and so it's not a surprise to them. So it's a nice report, about three or four pages long, where he looks at basically every piece of the infrastructure in the building, the cooling, the heating, um, the roof, floors, everything's in his report that he does. And uh, as a requirement, we must do that once a year. So we got that done yesterday and uh, moved on from there, went in. Mm-hmm. Kind of, again, the budget, uh, like any organization, we do a budget each year. We started in late June, early July, and it was given to the board last month, so they have a month to review it. And yesterday during the board meeting, they did approve the 2020 budget with no changes. So mm-hmm. what we presented is where we're going to, you know, it's kind of our uh, wish list, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, best guess what's going to happen next year. And, uh, you know, bad part with us, we can do a really good job of knowing what our expenses are because they're fairly fixed. We have to have same number of staff if we have zero patients or if we have 12. Uh, we have minimum staffing requirements that we must maintain. So the expenses are fairly easy. What we can't guess good at is who's going to be sick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, part of our job is to put ourselves out of business. We want to you know, keep healthy individuals in the community. So, you know, I say we're one of the few industries we, try, we work real hard to put ourselves out of business. Uh, so that's kind of the hard part is guessing what do we think the revenue is going to be for next year. So right now, based on our best guess, and we kind of use history to predict the future, looking to maybe about an $800,000 uh, operating profit next year is our best guess. Mm-hmm. And that's if everything happens like we anticipate. So we're hoping that uh, we can do better than that. But our goal is at least maintain that or maybe slightly less, but we still want an operating profit as we move into 2020. Sure. The other thing that we do is uh, this time of year, any other company, we have audits just like everybody else. In healthcare, one of the things we like to do is not keep that same audit firm forever and ever and ever. So every two to three years, we put it back out to bid to change the audit firm. So this year, uh, we have contracted what's called Blue and Company out of Indianapolis. They're very uh, well known in the state of Indiana for healthcare audits. Uh, BKD had done it in the past. So, you know, we'll put it next three years, we'll put it out for bid again and and move that around. And one of the things that as a former CFO, from an audit perspective, I like to change every three, two to three, 40 years, because the problem is if I was inclined, I kind of know what they're going to be looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you're wanting to do something shady, then if you know what they're looking for, you can change it. Sure. By having that different look, different audit firm come in, you don't know what they're looking for. So they have a different perspective. So, you know, it's kind of protection for myself and the CFO that, you know, they're coming in, they're going to look at it totally different than what BKD looked at how we do things. And that just makes sure everything is on the up and up. And, you know, I, I have no concerns with that, but it's kind of that little protection as a, again, as a former CFO, you like to make sure you got checks and balances. Audit firm is one of those checks and balances that we want to make sure we have within our organization so that there's nothing that can happen as we move forward into the future. Sure. Kind of got through all that. Finally got down into the financials uh, for, you know, how did we do in October? For the month of October, we billed out $13.1 million. Unfortunately, we had to write off $8 million of that, which is, you know, our normal. Uh, we call it our contractual allowances. And basically what happens, we make contracts with different insurance companies. Mm-hmm. So even though we bill them a dollar, they say, well, you can bill us the dollar. We're going to pay you $0.40. Cents. 
and we accept mm-hmm. it because that's probably the best we can do. Uh, the governmental units, it doesn't make any difference. They tell us what they're going to pay us. So it's it's kind of one of those, it's an unusual business that right now we're writing off, on average, 62% of every dollar we bill, we know we're not going to collect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's how healthcare runs. Not right, doesn't make sense to me, but it's the world I have to live in. Sure. So that left us on what's called an operating revenue or, you know, take-home pay, for lack of a better term, about $5.2 million. We spent right at $5 million, so had about a $200,000 operating profit. We had some non-operating income, and that's either interest income through the cap, you know, stuff that's not direct patient care related of uh, $260,000. So we actually had an operating profit for the month of uh, $459,000, so it's wow. nice to be on the black side uh mm-hmm. year to date we still have an operation still a fairly large deficit we know what caused that unfortunately we've had some uh, we're self-funded with our health insurance which means we pay any claims for any any of our employees or their family members is covered basically we pay their health their bills for them and uh you know you always try to guess where that's going to be and unfortunately we've had about 16 individuals this year that have uh come in at 2.2 million dollars worth of health insurance claims so we've had yeah unfortunately extremely sick individuals either the employee or their spouse you know and it's double-sided not only does it you know kind of hurt us with that 2.2 million dollars but they're off work you know they're not earning an income either so it's been devastating for both the employees and their families as well as the hospital this year so we're hoping kind of correct that next year that we can get them you know on that road to recovery so we're not seeing that kind of dollars as we move into 2020 so optimistic about 2020 uh hoping to make sure we have an operational profit as we move through the whole year and you know we kind of look back this year yeah we had an operational loss but had it not been for that health insurance we would have had an operational uh income this year so it's nice when you have something like that you know what caused it that's much easier than you have that kind of loss. You go, boy, we don't know what caused that. That's that's <laughs> yep. the ones that make you stay up at night trying to wonder what did that. So uh, you know, this year, get through it, and hopefully next year we have a much better year. And you know, important thing is get those families and our staff members well. Sure. You know, we, we want them back to work. You know, it helps them and helps us. Again, John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, joins us here on Giant FM WROI. We're talking about the board meeting last night. Is there anything else big we missed from that from that board meeting? Not, not really. That was kind of it. You know, the budget was kind of one of the big things that mm-hmm. we want to make sure to get that so we can have that as we start January. It's loaded into our system because we kind of like to use that as a kind of a roadmap. Here's what we thought we're going to do, and here's what we actually – and we look at those variances. So if we have a large variance, we try to figure out what caused that. And, again, health insurance was one this year. You know, it's not how much we budgeted, and we was able to kind of just narrow it down and say, okay, we know what's going on there. So that is our roadmap. We're hoping that we've got, uh, you know, the GPS is set on go next year, and we hit, hit that operational profit. Again, John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, joins us this morning on Giant FM WROI. John, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me.